we are now at the end of the road here. This is the last thing we need to work on. Um, the last little videos that you'll be watching for preparation of finishing this course. So um, I'm going to start with number one on the course review, which is the same thing as saying a final review, a final exam review. And for these sections 1.4 to 1.6, the first problem is solve the following. So for number one, we have 3x squared plus 8x equal to negative 1. This is a quadratic. Um, equation. So in order to solve the quadratic equation, I have to set it equal to zero, which means I will have to add one to both sides of this equation. Then I could try to factor it, but if I don't want to go through the whole process of factoring, um, I can use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so then I get negative 8 plus or minus, and let's see what we get there. Um, 8 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1 is 52 over 6. The square root of 52 is... 2 square root of 13. And then I can simplify this. And so this I can simplify to negative 4 thirds. And this I can simplify to 1 third. But um, you still have the square root of 13. And then the choices might actually have it as one fraction. And you don't need to write the invisible 1 coefficient. So the choices will probably look something like this, okay? And then you can always check your answer in the back. Um, and so sure enough, they have that answer in um, braces there, okay? But yours is gonna be multiple choice, so you'll be able to select it from the um, choices there. Now number two, we have 15 over x minus two plus 15 over x plus two equal to four. Now how do we solve um, equations that have fractions? We multiply both sides by the common denominator or every single term by the common denominator. And here I have two different factors. So I actually have to use both when multiplying by the common denominator. And so then what ends up happening is the x minus two will cancel, the x plus two will cancel, and here there was no denominator to cancel anything. So what am I left with? I'm left with 15 times this factor plus 15 times this factor equal to four times both factors. And so then if I distribute my 15, I have 15x plus 30, distribute this 15, we get 15x minus 30. Here I'm gonna multiply these first and then I'll distribute the four later. So x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus four. If I combine my like terms, these will actually cancel each other out and so will these. So I get 30x equals four times x squared minus four. If I distribute that four, I get four x squared minus 16. This is a quadratic, so I gotta get it equal to zero. So that means minus 30x on both sides. And I get four x squared minus 30x minus 16. And I could try to factor it or I could just use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So then this becomes positive 30, and this becomes 8. And let's see about the inside. Negative 30 squared minus 4 times 4 times 16 is 644. And is there a square root of 644? Yep, it is 
2 square root of 161 over 8. So if I simplify this, I will get 15 over 4 plus or minus 1 over 4. And then I can write them together as 15 plus or minus square root of 161 over 4. Um, actually, there might be something happening here because this answer does not match what is in the back. So let's go ahead and investigate. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 a c oh i see my error when i typed this in the calculator notice i typed positive 16 and it should have been negative 16. so there was my error so then inside the radical should not have been 644 but instead 1156 now let's see what is the square root of that it is just 34. So then that means I would have had two answers here. So 30 plus 34 over 8 and then 30 minus 34 over 8. So let's see what we get there. So if I separate that, I get 30 plus 34 over 8 and 30 minus 34 over 8. And if I simplify that, that is going to be 64 over 8 and negative 4 over 8, which is 8 and negative 1 half. Now, when you have fractions in your original equation, you have to make sure that neither of these solutions or if any of these solutions make the original denominator zero. Eight will not make those denominators zero and negative one half will not make those denominators zero. Therefore, both of them will be your solutions. Okay. Now for number three, we have 6x over x minus 6 equal to 4 over x, or I'm sorry, minus 4 over x equal to 24 over x squared minus 6x. Well, before I can determine what the common denominator is, I must have um, this denominator factored. So if I factor that, I can factor out an x and I'm left with x minus 6. So what are the distinct factors here? The distinct factors are x and x minus 6. So what I will do is I will take each fraction and multiply it by x and x minus 6. And since this one has x minus 6, those will cancel. I'll end up with 6x times x, which is 6x squared. Here the x's will cancel, but I'll still have negative 4 times x minus 6. And here the x, the x, and the x minus 6's will cancel. So all I'll have left on this side is a 24. Now, if I distribute that 4, or negative 4, I will have negative 4x positive 24 equal to positive 24. So I do have a quadratic, which means I do need to get this equal to 0. So I will have 0 equals 6x squared minus 4x. Um, I could factor out an x. I can actually factor out a 2x. And I get 3x minus 2. So if I set this factor equal to 0 and I set this factor equal to 0, here I will get 0. And here I will get 2 thirds. Now, if I try to plug 0 back into the original, notice that this denominator would be just 0. So this solution is not going to check out. 
But when I plug in two thirds and I minus six, that's not gonna equal zero. And when I plug in two thirds here, that's not gonna equal zero. So I have a non-zero number and another non-zero number. Well, if I multiply those non-zero numbers together, then this denominator is not going to be zero either. Therefore, two thirds is the only solution here. Now let's do number four. So when you have a square root problem, you do have to isolate the square root before you can eliminate the square root. So in this instance, I'm going to have to minus five first so that I can get the square root quantity by itself on one side. Once I have that, then I can go ahead and square both sides of the polynomial. So here the square and the square root will cancel each other out. And over here, that means x minus five times itself. So I actually have to distribute that out. Oops, I'm doing something funny over here. I get minus five x minus five x and then plus 25. It is a square, so I'm gonna minus these two terms over to the right. And if I combine all of these, I get negative 11x. And if I combine these, I get positive 18, I believe. Oops. Yes, it's positive 18. And so this one I can actually factor because it's just one and 18. So it's gonna be x and x and then um, nine and two. And those will combine to give me negative 11, but multiply to give me positive 18. So I have zero equals x minus nine and zero equals x minus two. Or you can just use quadratic formula and you'll still get two for x and nine for x. Now I do have to check these because um, when you have radical equations, you're, you could have done all your steps correctly, but the solutions don't check out. So if I plug in nine, I'm gonna get the square root of nine plus seven plus five on the outside equal to nine. That's the square root of 16 plus five equal to nine, which is four plus five equal to nine. And that's true, four plus five does equal nine. So this one works. Now let's plug in two. Here we get the square root of nine plus five equals two, which is three plus five equals two. And that is not true. That would equal eight, not two. So this one does not work. So when you're writing your solution set, you're only gonna write nine in the solution set. Okay, we might have some time for Actually, let me stop here since that's the end of sections 1.4 and 1.6, and I'll go into a part two of this video and start the chapter two material.